Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to this Sunday Eucharist. At the start of this Eucharist, as I'd like us to do in St. Stephen's every Sunday, I'd like husbands to hug their wives, parents to hug their children, and everybody shake hands with one another, so that the bond of family joy may be within us. Please take a few moments to do that, and I will wait for you to do that. Do it right now. And with joy in our hearts, let us sign ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our feelings. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We give glory to God as we sing. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, the whole congregation of the people of Israel 
grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing. Fine has frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response to the psalm shall be, The Lord gave them bread from heaven. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the fertility of their minds, but that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him 
as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory be to you, Lord. Lord. At that time, when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do? to be doing the works of God. Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please open your Bibles. Um, our text today is from John chapter 6, verses 24 to 35. John chapter 6, verse 24 to 35. My dear brothers and sisters, today's gospel is, in a way, a continuation, if you please, of last Sunday's gospel text. So I do hope you remember what we did last Sunday. To, just to refresh your memory so that you're not panicking at home. Last Sunday, we heard of the multiplication of the fish and the loaves. At the end of the sign, remember I taught you this last Sunday, that the Gospel of St. John does not have miracles but has signs. So at the end of the sign of the multiplication of the loaves and fish, Jesus, we are told, left the place 
as he realized that the people whose bellies were full wanted to take him and make him king by force. For the crowds, the sign they experienced was about having their stomachs full of food. They failed to see that the real sign was Jesus. Even though the crowd, we are told, last Sunday acclaimed Jesus as a prophet and sought to make him king, you, we read this in John chapter 6, verse 14 to 15, they seem not to have really understood the significance of what really happened at the feeding of the miracle. Last Sunday, they called him, as I said, a prophet, even though it was quite clear that he was the long-awaited Messiah. They simply chose to see what they wanted. I'm going to say that again. They simply chose to see what they wanted. So this brings me to my first reflection this Sunday. This is a question we need to ask ourselves. Who is Jesus to me? Now I'm going to give you the correct answer. Because the correct answer is, He is my Lord and my Savior, full stop. Any other expression is secondary. He is my friend, he is my whatever else you want to call him, is secondary. Principally, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Now there are many, many Catholics too, who in order to sound secular, in order um, to be popular among their friends, especially secular friends, will talk of Jesus as a God. You'll hear this. He is a God or one of the gods. Jesus is God, full stop. He's the only God. He's the only begotten Son of the Father. This must be our confession of faith, no matter where we are, no matter who we are with. We cannot choose to see Jesus the way we wish to in order to sound secular or socially acceptable. And I say this with a very heavy heart because I have nothing against mixed marriages. But very often at the time of a mixed marriage, our Catholic partners want us priests to compromise. No, Father, we want them also to be comfortable. Sure. This is the house of God. Let everybody feel comfortable. But compromise is not part of the deal. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. So the gospel now tells us that Jesus heads to Capernaum. Capernaum was somewhere in the north of Galilee. It was his de facto headquarters in Galilee. And is, um, Jesus is quickly followed, we are told, to Capernaum by the crowds. At first, Jesus knows what they're up to. Look, he knows what all of us are up to. Make no mistake. We may try to fool the Lord as much as we want. Jesus knows our hearts. Just because you feel that the Lord has not caught you, for whatever reason, don't think he's not aware. Jesus confronts them. What does he say to them? Truly, truly, I tell you. He says, you are not looking for me. You are looking for me not because you saw the signs but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Now, I know this sounds very harsh, but I do not think that Jesus was scolding the crowd for seeking bread because they were hungry. Remember in Palestine, people struggled to eke out a living. It was difficult to live at the time of Jesus. So, of course, if you're getting a free meal, why not? So, I don't think Jesus was scolding them. I think Jesus, in a way, was disappointed that the crowds did not expect more, not more bread, but can I get something more out of Jesus? You see, we are like that. Lord, as long as you fill my stomach, I'm okay. Do I want something more from you, Lord? Do I want to come closer to you? Do I want to spend 10 minutes more in prayer with you? Ah, that's another story. Sadly, and sadly because they found a source of, for food like we, they were not looking for Jesus anymore. They are looking for the man who could keep feeding them. And the question we have to ask ourselves, has Jesus become a provider for us or is he my savior? 
because when I stop getting my provisions then I'm upset with the Lord and sadly this is the Christianity that we have now come to my provider Lord I go to him when I want my shopping list look it's perfectly okay to go to the Lord with a list but is that the only thing we are going to the Lord for or are we going to him for grace for peace for love for strength to bear our burdens now one would have also thought that the multiplication of the fish and the loaves would be this would be a sign enough for these people these crowds to realize that Jesus is the Messiah like us too who have experienced the Lord the crowds have many questions instead of faith and belief they had many doubts in Jesus look at today's gospel look at your Bibles today look at verse 25 they begin with when did you come here Lord <laughs> when did you come here like as if Jesus had to give them his attendance when did you come here Lord then they say what must we do to perform the works of God like as if they didn't know <laughs> what must I do Lord to come to heaven do we not know but see how similar we are to the crowds at the time of Jesus and then when faith is uh, rattled we ask the Lord like they asked him what sign will you give us what work are you performing for us Jesus verse 30 what sign what work are you performing come on Jesus prove that you are the Lord this is how they dealt with Jesus this is how we deal with Jesus you know Jesus refuses to answer the questions which they have asked look carefully at your Bible he doesn't answer them but instead Jesus redirects the conversation to more important issues because that's what he wants to do even in our life not answer our silly trivial questions he says look I've got some really big questions and issues that I need you to focus on so stop asking me these silly questions let's deal with the bigger issues because they have focused on the wrong bread Jesus redirects them towards the bread as he says which endures don't think about your last meal says Jesus let's think of the bigger picture then they ask Jesus because they're not happy with his answer no as we are not sometimes okay then you perform a sign like Moses did that's what they said you perform a sign like Moses did when God provided the Israelites with a miraculous food in the desert now think about it I think it seems strange for them to say this why because Jesus has just performed the sign like the one they asked for he did it last Sunday like Moses he gave them bread to eat on the mountaintop when they were hungry and yet look what they say give us another sign sounds familiar you and me Lord the last sign you gave me is not enough I want another one prove yourself again what does Jesus do with us what does Jesus do with the crowds Jesus does not give up on us on these disbelieving crowds he loves us he is our Lord the crowds want to know something and Jesus answers with a different kind of information as he does with us he seizes every opportunity he seizes every opportunity once again to teach he says come I need to teach you I need to instruct you Jesus uses the bread that fill their stomachs to become the primary extended metaphor in order to stretch their understanding in order to make them really understand what he wanted to say which brings me now to my second reflection we have a God who never tires of us he's the hound of heaven he never tires of us he never tires of the silly questions that we have and of how often we question him think about it we have a God who bears as the prophet Isaiah says he bears our iniquities he carries our sorrows he carries our sorrows not we are carrying our sorrows we experience them but the Lord carries it for us the question is how long are we going to try God's patience how long are we going to put the Lord to te the test and finally my dear brothers and sisters in today's gospel Jesus responds to us as he did to the crowd this is the work of God that you believe in him he says whom God has sent to believe in God to believe in Jesus 
is to trust that God is doing something new. That human created con conditions and circumstances cannot undermine or negate. To believe in Jesus is to submit everything, even our highest stake issues. Give it to God. Give it to God's saving work in Jesus. To believe is not so much what we do as being open to what God is going to do in our lives. So spend a few moments, my dear brothers and sisters, in prayerful reflection. Think about this Sunday and the message that the Lord is giving. And let the word of God touch your heart so that we no longer doubt but that we may believe. Amen. Please spend a few moments in silent prayer. My sisters and brothers, let us stand as we profess our faith. The words will now appear on your screen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, at the tables of the Word and the Eucharist, the Lord nourishes us on our pilgrim way. With gratitude for His goodness, let us make our intercessions together. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. All together. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church in this diocese, brought into unity by celebrating Christ's sacrifice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders who seek to follow ways of reconciliation, peace and justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women being prepared for reception into our Eucharistic family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deeper reverence and devotion to the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the dead who rest in Christ's care. I want to pray especially for the... We had three deaths this week in our parish. I want to lift up all the three souls and their families that the Lord may give them comfort in this time of distress. Father of Christ, the bread of life, through this Eucharist, make us grow in holiness and goodness and grant what we ask in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated everyone.
pray my sisters and brothers that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord, may the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name, name for the good and good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Just for a minute, think that the angels of God are now around this altar as we sang Hosanna to the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Oswald, our Bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Stephen, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. With great joy in your heart, and as I keep saying, if you have the privilege of having family in these days of lockdown in your home, reach out to them, hold their hands, as we say together this beautiful prayer that Jesus our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Jesus our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share God's love with one another. Peace be with you. Peace Together, Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shed down my room. But Lord, I say the, the word, and my soul, and shall, my be soul shall be We will now make a prayer for spiritual communion. The words will now appear on your screen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. Show me every day as your teacher. 
teaching me your way that you do just what you say in your time in your time in your time you make all things beautiful in your time Lord my life to you I bring with its winter and its spring may I fatten everything in your time To our parishioners, it's St. Stephen's and all the online parishioners who join in at this Mass. I want to thank you for your prayers for my father. Um, as some of you know that uh, he has been diagnosed with colon cancer. And we are still in the stage where we are gathering together his reports uh, to get and make an informed decision with regard uh, to his course of uh, line of treatment. I want to thank you for your prayers. As a consequence of this, for the parishioners of St. Stephen's, I will be in and out of Goa, uh, but I will always be available to you on the phone in my absence. Uh, Father Theo will care for all uh, matters uh, containing to sacramental life for funerals and any other sacramental matters that you would have. The office will remain open. Mr. Varghis will uh, attend to any matters regarding to certificates that you might require. So please remember we have a new office now on the ground floor. We are open during COVID times between uh, 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. every day, Monday to Saturday. So thank you once again for your prayers for my father and for my family. God bless you for your kindness. Let us pray. A company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, Make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us glorify Jesus by the lives that we live. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord. Have a blessed Sunday, everybody. God bless you.